Aquarium lighting. Is my light strong enough? Do I have the right color spectrum? Can I find a cheaper choice rather than buying the super expensive known brands? There seems to be so many questions around this and so many different answers. It's confusing. I'm not here to sell you a light. I'm here to share my experience and to help you understand this topic much better. If you don't have an aquarium yet, but you're planning on getting one soon, after this video, you'll know exactly what kind of lighting you need. And if you currently have one, you'll know if it's right for you. Color Spectrum The purpose of a planter aquarium light is to imitate sunlight the best way possible, to recreate the effect that sunlight has on plants and trigger photosynthesis. In aquarium lighting, the color spectrum of a light refers to the colors that are being used in the light and how much of each color it's used. That's your color spectrum. Out of the whole spectrum, the colors that plants use the most for photosynthesis are red and blue. If your focus is to grow plants for profit, you could use a light that only uses red and blue, but those lights make everything look pink. In a planter aquarium, we're looking for natural colors, as similar to daylight as we can. That's why lots of aquarium lights use red, blue, and green, because these colors together create the most natural appearance, while still providing plants with the appropriate colors for photosynthesis. So when you see a light that's labeled RGB, that's what it means, red, green, and blue. If you see something that's labeled WRGB, it means it's got a little bit of white in there too. The next thing you need to know is color temperature. I think this is where all the confusion starts. When I started getting into aquascaping, I thought color temperature was a measurement for intensity. I was trying to find Kelvin measurements to know if I had a strong light or not. That's not what it is. What it is, is a way to tell how warm or cold the light looks. A light that has a color temperature of under 4000 degrees Kelvin, it's going to look yellowish, like an old light bulb. If the color temperature goes over 8000 degrees Kelvin, then it looks blue. To put it simply, if you have an RGB light, color temperature is telling you if you have too much blue, or if you have too much red. The sweet spot sits between 5500 to 6500 degrees Kelvin. But remember, we are trying to imitate sunlight. So all you need to do regarding color temperature is to make sure that the light is using the colors that your plants need for photosynthesis and that it looks natural. If you put those two things together, then you don't need to worry about color temperature. If you guys are enjoying this video, please let me know in the comments. I'd like to know if this tutorial type content is something that's helpful. And consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel for more weekly videos like this. Up to this point, we know which colors our plants need, and we know how to make it look nice, natural. Now, let's get into light intensity. And the first thing to consider is PAR. What is PAR? Photosynthetically active radiation. Sounds complicated, right? It's how bright the light is. That's all it is. What makes it so special is that it measures the brightness of the color spectrum that plants use for photosynthesis. That beautiful spectrum that we've been talking about for a while. Part doesn't measure any light, only the light that plants use for photosynthesis. When you think about it, it's the perfect measurement. If only manufacturers will give us that measurement, which they don't. If you want to know that measurement, you'll either have to buy a part meter 
which costs as much as the light, or trust someone else's calculation that you find online. If you have a power meter, this is what you're looking for. Now, if you don't have a power meter, let me show you a better measurement. Lumen. Lumen is also a measurement of brightness. The biggest difference between lumen and part is that part measures the brightness of light available for photosynthesis, while lumen measures the brightness of light that humans can see. When we look at it that way, it seems like they are two completely different things. But when you look at the light spectrum graph, you'll notice something interesting. Humans can see a light spectrum from 380 to 750 nanometers, while plants only use a light spectrum from 400 to 700 nanometers. Can you see what I mean? The difference between them is minimal. And the best thing about Lumen is that almost every manufacturer will give you this measurement. Now, how do you know if you're getting a light that is strong enough to grow the plants that you want? It's quite simple. You take Lumen and divide it by the amount of liters in your aquarium. A low intensity light will have around 5 to 15 lumen per liter. With such a light, you can grow low tech plants like anubias or mosses. Then we got medium intensity lights from 20 to 40 lumen per liter. With this kind of light, you can grow almost any plant, with the exception of high demanding plants, the ones that get really red. For those, you need high intensity lighting, 40 lumen or more per liter. So if you want to know your light's intensity, the best thing to look for is lumen. The last thing I want to talk about are watts. Because they were used as a way to measure light intensity for a long time. And lots of manufacturers still include that information with their lights. Watts indicate how much energy the light is consuming, and it was relevant before, because other lights would consume a lot of energy. But with newer LED lights, it's not that accurate anymore. They produce a lot of light and don't consume that much energy. If the manufacturer is giving you the information for lumen, you don't need watts. So guys, if you want to get the right light for your aquarium, all you need to do is make sure that it uses the right color spectrum and that it looks natural. Then figure out if it's a low, medium or high intensity light by using Lumen. That's it. I hope this video was helpful. See you all next week.